Here is a 2024 Toyota Camry TRD in Windchill Pearl, the two-tone gloss black roof. Is this going to be the last year that we get a naturally aspirated V6 with 300 plus horsepower? lower ride that's going to be more stiff and agile. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides and the front fascia is going to be more aggressive because of the aero kit that starts on the lower bit going into the enlarged grille by LED headlights and daytime runnings and I like the two-tone effect that comes into play. It is a carryover from the 23 but for this engine that's underneath here that's something that's still special because it houses a naturally aspirated V6 3.5 liter with 301 horsepower 267 pound-feet of torque paired to an eight-speed automatic transmission achieving 22 mpgs for the city 31 mpgs for the highway reaching 60 around six seconds. It's not track worthy, but it's quick when you're talking about a family car that's transformed into a sports car. What does the TRD do? They lower the ride 0.6 inches, red brake calipers, dual pistons in the front, 12.1 inch disc reading, which is larger than the standard Camry, 19 inch matte black, TRD wheels, if you go XSE, it's going to be gloss black, but it's not going to have a TRD tuned suspension, which is a more rigid chassis and TRD shock absorbers. The gloss black against the white gives more of that dynamic look with the aero kit in the red pinstripe that goes across. The only thing I dislike right off the bat is this aero kit. It's just basically double-sided tape. I understand what we're trying to accomplish, but if it's not going to give us anything for aerodynamics or better weight distribution, there's no point except for aesthetics. The rear of the TRD is the most aggressive Camry yet, predominantly because of the spoiler that's on top of the trunk lid. LED taillights and the lower gets that aero kit that just features the whole vehicle with dual TRD cat back exhaust tips, which sound amazing. You're going to hear that in a second. But the actual image of this, it doesn't look like a family car. And that's what you're getting when you go into TRD opposed to an XSE or an SE with the XP package where you'll have more styling elements. Here, you're getting more suspension, brakes, and the kit to make it look the track worthy, even though it's still family oriented. Quick release going into 15.1 cubic feet. The opening is wide enough. You get the bag holders here on the sides. Underneath, you'll have your spare tire with your jack and the TRD Camry floor mats. Let's go inside and start up this V6 301 horsepower so you can hear that catback exhaust though. way power seat adjustment with the cloth and soft tech interior TRD badging manual seat adjustment for the passenger headroom and leg room we have two occupants today both of us are over six foot tall so that way you can see it is a driver focused setup nine inch 11 speaker JBL sound system and the two tiers with the gloss black and the aluminum look with the satin aluminum that goes around the air vents and that driver focused setup dual climate control will be on the LE but it's only a single climate control on the TRD I'm gonna flip it Put it into reverse so you can see the trajectory it does expand out whenever you turn the wheel apple carplay android auto sirius xm am fm streaming bluetooth audio qi wireless charger we do not have that but we do have a hidden storage pocket underneath here with a 12 volt and a usb port trd with the soft tech around the gear lever and the driving mode for eco normal and sport the key fob for the new TRD and it's going to be a little bit more sporty opens up into a long and pretty deep storage pocket with two USB ports three-spoke steering wheel multi-function with adaptive cruise control lane keep assist you get the cross stitch in red with the paddle shifts the stocks and the gauge cluster has a 4.2 TFT display that can go through an array of information in different settings for the driver otherwise it's analog for the tack and odometer no auto dimming rear view mirror or a pano or 
moonroof push this for your sunglass open and the door panel will integrate into the dashboard it's going to be more everyday materials and it's going to be sporty pretty much everywhere one touch up and down for the windows with a smaller storage pocket with a couple of beverage holders carved out and stainless steel pedals for the driver for the back seat headroom and leg room storage behind both of the front seat with a storage tray. No USB or air vents in the back. No armrests with cup holders, but we get the red for the seat belts. The door is going to have the same materials found in the front. Storage can fit two cups or bottles. Sliding into the center, the floor is not completely flat. The rails are pushed up enough. You will still be sharing feet, butt and shoulder space, especially if you're over six foot tall with the seat back. Headroom is going to be a little bit more tight sitting in the center. 301 horsepower, naturally aspirated V6. It might be the last time you hear that for a TRD, if they do a TRD. Look at this thing. Catback exhaust, 267 pound-feet of torque. Did lower the chassis, so you are 0.6 inches lower to the ground, which means it's going to be a little bit more rigid and firm. I don't feel it on these 19 inch wheels. It's not a staggered step up, so you don't have to worry there. Now, on the benefit for a 2025 model, it's not 100% confirmed, but they may do a GR version of this, which they more than likely will change the powertrain. So this could be more of a sawed off type of vehicle because it's a naturally aspirated V6. Zero to 60, around six seconds. This is a family car and yet it's not track worthy, don't get me wrong, but that's pretty quick for a family vehicle. Now it's gonna feel a little bit more wider because you sit a little bit lower. It is pretty long. Comparing against the new Honda Accord, you're not going to get that. Dynamically speaking, you're not going to feel like you're in the Fast and Furious, so don't think about it like that. But it's going to feel a lot faster than a standard XSE only because of all the aesthetics that boast from this TRD spec. It will take me to some pros and cons. Starting with the pros, you've already heard quite a bit of them. They do a great job in the sense of giving you a touch of performance and it's still in a $30,000 price point because in what world do we live in that you can get something like this with over 300 horsepower for that kind of price? You're going to start ticking forty dollars and $45,000 in which when you go into Honda, you're not going to get performance. You're going to get MPGs, but you still get pretty decent here. So it's a give or take, but I'm going to take on this side because I get a little bit more performance underneath the hood. Some cons about the vehicle, Toyota's seats are a little bit less in the length for your butt area. So from front to back, meaning your back to your knee. So if you are tall, there's no cushion extensions. They don't option anything like that. So your legs can get a little bit more tired on a longer journey. And the back seat is going to be a little bit tight if taller occupants are sitting in the front. But the back seat is just as comfortable as the front because you actually sit back a little bit. Some other cons is hard materials. Toyota is just known for this. Same thing with Honda. But when you're starting to get near a $40,000 price point, I mean, some of this is, it needs to go. Now going for the 2025 model, again, nothing's set in stone or confirmed on an engine change. They are changing the exterior and the interior is going to look a little bit more modern. Whereas this, it is starting to age a little bit. And the big con that I see with the TRD is you're not getting dual climate control settings. You're not getting standard navigation, heated front seats, heated steering wheel. You don't get any pano moonroof or a moonroof. There's a few things that they start stripping out of the TRD in which this is above the XSE. So I would like to see a lot of those features come into play, even though I am getting the exhaust and I'm getting some of those styling cues. It would be nice that they throw in some of the amenities. Now let's really hear a go. She is fun. Turn radius, we're gonna actually just pull up here like this. It's about two and a part lane, so that way you know. And some Toyotas are gonna be nice to us. And look at the maneuverability. And the visibility is good. Even though you're sitting down low, it's not too over the top. But I have brought somebody with me. Let's hear his thoughts. Well, I like how the TRD has a six second zero to 60 for a car that's only 
30, 40 grand. I also like how aggressive the body of the car is, because, um, I mean, for a Camry, it's pretty aggressive. And the catback exhaust. And going back to it. And that's exactly what my son was explaining. You get something that's more unique and it's still family oriented, which is hard to get a blend because then you usually have to go up the tier. Honda's not gonna offer this, nor is Nissan. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise, website, and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank Stadium Toyota for giving us this 2024 Toyota Camry TRD for our car review.